Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ Hammer Mark Texture. It's so popular in the jewelry care design that you don't want to miss. Today I'm going to show you how to create this Hammer Mark Texture with your Rhino 3D software for your jewelry design. Are you ready? Let's get started. For this hammer texture, we actually need to make this texture in flat and then we flow it back to this ring and then let me show you how to make the texture that's starting from the scratch. So we're going to come in the front view and decide that what size of the ring that you like in my demonstration is going to be diameter for 18 millimeter. So let's use the command circle to draw this circle and then we want to come into the right view and to draw the profile. Um, most of the time, this kind of a ring band will be fairly thick, so I'm gonna go close to the 8 millimeter, and we're gonna have something a little bit over 1.5 millimeter, and I'll let me go ahead to move, uh, use the move command to move this back to the center. Alright, so let's do the design right here. I simply wanted to get something like a rim outside, so there will be a bump there, and then just mirror this guy to the other side. All right, so then we have two bump there. And in the middle, I would like to have the arc and we're gonna start it here and here somewhere in the middle to get something like this. You don't need to get like really bump because you're gonna have the texture and you don't want it to texture it to be higher than those two bump there, right? After you get this one, this one, this one, um, we're gonna join them together. So on the bottom, we're going to explode it. So we're gonna delete this one right here. Let's go ahead to join everybody. I also like to have a bottom of the ring shank is a little bit nice and rounded. So let's go ahead to use a fitted curve. And I'm going to fill it about one here and one in the radius there. So that will be our curve. Now we only need to deal the pattern in the middle. So let's go ahead to explode it one more time. And this is the curve we are going to use first. Let's go ahead to making a surface. Coming into the surface, we have a sweep one rail, and this is the rail, this is the cross section, and then I will get this surface there. This surface is gonna, uh, for us to use as a reference surface. So we are going to know like how big of the area one this, is, this surface is flattened. So we're gonna use the command called create UV curve and just hit enter and then you have this area right here this is the area we are going to do the design now in order to do the pattern we actually need to preview it in the solid so i simply just gonna come in into the solid and we have extrude a planar curve straight and i just want to extrude it just a little bit um, it doesn't have to be like super thick like this all right so that will be the surface uh, this solid for us to use as a reference. So talking about the texture, we need to understand what kind of a tool to create in this texture. So if you go to Google and type it planish hammer, uh, you will see some hammer look like this. This type of a hammer is like really slightly dome and that hit on the metal to get this dent in there. You also can use a ball pin hammer if you wanted the dent to be more obviously. But with either one that you're going to see, it's like a really round uh, shape to hammer on the metal. So we are going to mimic the same way that actually working on the metal by creating some sort of a dome shape as a cutting tool. So let's go ahead simply to use the uh, sphere. And the sphere can be any size, we can adjust it later. Now, if you take a look on my front view and like this, this is a how much of the dent it's going to get in there. If you feel like this uh, from view, this is like too deep of the texture and you can just want the scale and then kind of move it down something like this to get it a little bit shadower, right? So let me 
use this one and we want to create in the texture we wanted to see how big of that texture first let's go ahead to coming to the perspective I'm going to use the boolean difference that this difference out from this. So you can see that will be one blow on the hammer mark. We also need to take a look if this mark is too big for our ring or not, right? Um, so if that it is the size that you like, because the hammer does come in the different uh, sizes, I'm going to make some copy like this. Kind of moving one here making a copy by hit the alt key alt on your keyboard i'm also going to make another one right here and make a uh, alt key now we don't know what is going on right there um, but we can kind of a guessing from the top let's go do another test right there we're going to use the boolean difference this one out of this one so you will have this structure right here. Notice that there's a gap right here. So I know that in this piece, it might need to move in a little bit in order to not having that gap. Now, once you uh, move that, we want to do another test and see if this mark looking good. All right, so those looking good for me, then I'm going to Boolean Union those top three. So those top three will be one unit, right? That's moving a little bit right here, making a copy with the Alt key on my gumbo, and I wanna rotate it a little bit. You wanted to make sure that you mimic the way the hammer blow. It won't be exactly like the same place. They will be up and down, they will be rotated. And I'm also going to make another one about right here by repeating those patterns and then kind of rotate it. All right, so let's give it a try. We want a boolean difference, this one out of this one. So that looking really good for me. If that look good to you too, then just go ahead to Boolean Union. And we are going to start moving this to the side right there. To save you some time, uh, you may need to kind of uh, repeating this pattern multiple times. And the easy way to do is to using the linear array. And I'm going linear array, bunch of them, maybe like 10 of them. And just go from here as long as it's over the half of them. And it's kind of need to rotate a bunch of them. So I'm going to have this one here, this one here, and it's kind of moving up and down. And try not to make it look like it's like uniform pattern. So you want a spontaneous to move them into a different angle. If you feel like you need another one right there, just making a copy and something like this. All right, let's take a look on the perspective and sometimes we can tell like what's going on with this view. Look like I'm missing some of this on the edge. And if you don't like that, you may want to moving few pieces down by copy this to these places and copy another one to these places. All right, so if that look okay to you, let's give it a test. We wanna do the Boolean difference. This one will be difference out of this one. So I know I'm missing some spot there, then I can make a bunch of the copy. One is gonna be here, the other one gonna be here, another one gonna be here, and also this corner. I try to fill it up uh, with all the hammer mark as possible. All right, so then we got something like this. All right, so once we have it, you can rotate it if you want to. Let's do Boolean difference one more time. This one will be difference out of those. Okay, so now we have everything that's ready there. Um, that still have one spot missing, but I will leave that to you. Let's take a look on the render view and see if this is what we're looking for. So we have those hammer mark if you like it. You can continue for the, the other half, but when you flow this pattern back to the ring, uh, what happened is you're going to see a seam right there. So in order to avoid the seam looking, it's not matching at the beginning and the end, what I like to do is I'm going to use a straight line and uh, snapping into the midpoint of my curve. And then with this, I'm going to draw a straight line there and actually go ahead to trim the other half. All right. 
Once we trim the other half, we just need to have this one mirror to the other side. And we'll join together. So even though it's a little bit weird right there, but it's better than not matching there, right? And then we have on the other side, it will match too over there. Okay, so now we have this, we are ready to flow this back to our surface. Now, in order to flow a long surface, you need to have a surface. So the box or the curve rectangle that we have initially, I'm going to turn them into the surface. And so I'm going to do the surface from planar curve, right? Once we get that surface um, right here, I'm going to mark it into the red color. It's easier for you to see. Let's take a look on the ghost view. We need to have this surface go a little bit lower. Otherwise, you won't see your texture at all. And then, so I'm going to have them go slightly lower like this. All right. You can trim, you know, if you don't need that many on the bottom, you can actually pulling them off so it doesn't stick it out from the bottom of the ring. So we just need to make a box by using the box command. And we want to do the boolean difference, this pattern out of the box. So it will be a little bit shorter. Okay. And then that way it's, we just need a little bit intersection. All right. So now we have everything. Let's go ahead to use the command. Under transform, you have flow along surface. And then you got this object that you want to flow. And then this is one of the corner and we are going to pick up one of the corner right there. All right. So now it flow back here, we just need to finish our ring. So let's go ahead to join all this curve that we earlier exploded. And then we want to use the command for sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the cross section. And then you will get something like this. Let's take a look on the render view. So this will be the hammer mark texture for a men's ring. If you are a beginner, try to learn jewelry care design and having a lot of the questions, I have a perfect solution for you. Check out my course with the jewelry care masterclass, which I personally answer my student questions on a weekly basis with a private group coaching program. More detail is in the description below for jewelry care masterclass. Thank you for watching and see you in the course.